<clears throat> Edwin Hubble, Section 13.3, Edwin Hubble, using the largest telescopes of his day, uh, came up with our modern classification of galaxies, and it's based simply on their shape. Uh, we've all seen pictures of beautiful spiral galaxies, so the ones with the spiral arms are simply called spiral galaxies. Uh, they're densest in that central bulge area, just like we saw with the uh, Milky Way. And Hubble decided to break them, to further divide them into three subcategories, based on how tightly wound the arms are. So an SA, for example, uh, tends to have a, a large central bulge area, more stars, more gravity, and I'm assuming because of that larger area that's bringing in those spiral arms so that they're tightly wound. That's an SA. At the other extreme, SCs have less material in the middle. Their arms are not as tightly held, not as tightly bound, and they're kind of flailing out there. And SBs, of course, are in between. Now, when you see spiral galaxies in space, uh, they can look very different. They can look very different from each other. Here we have M81 on the left and M82, both spiral galaxies. But you notice here M81 looks like a traditional spiral. I bet that's an SC there because the arms are pretty spread out. And down here, M82, which is sometimes called the cigar galaxy, um, you notice it looks very different. Why? Well, because you're seeing it from the edge, kind of like seeing a coin on the edge. Um, I know that it's a spiral, actually, partly because of that lane of dust and gas right up through the middle of it. So spirals can look very different from each other. Now, here's an SC with a small central bulge and pretty loose arms out there. Uh, they tend to have more dust and gas, so they're going to produce more new stars. Here's a little gallery of some of my favorites. You have M74. Remember, M stands for the Messier list. The perfect spiral. Beautiful. M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy. They were actually making sketch of the, sketches of this all the way back in the 1800s before they even knew uh, really what they were looking at. They were making beautiful sketches. The Earl of Ross made beautiful sketches of the Whirlpool Galaxy. M101, the pinwheel, I believe that's up near uh, the Big Dipper in the sky in Ursa Major. And our big sister galaxy, Andromeda. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. Uh, the Sunflower Galaxy, you notice that one has a lot of dust and gas, so probably we can assume that one's making a lot of new stars. And uh, one of my all-time favorites, the Sombrero Galaxy. This beautiful edge-on view of the sombrero. It's one of the more popular ones, uh, posters and things. Here it is, a composite picture of sombrero in x-rays, infrared, and visible light all together, showing detail that our eyes alone could not see. Now, there's another whole class of spirals called barred spirals. Our Milky Way is one. That's something we've learned just in the last 10 to 15 years, that our Milky Way galaxy is now considered to be a barred spiral. Look at the bottom middle picture here. That's the bar that we're talking about. That's the bar. That middle region is not just spherical. It actually has extended sort of wings there, making it a bar. And so what Hubble did was he classified them as SB for barred spiral and then still used the lowercase letters for how tightly wound the arm. So on the left, see these arms are very closely wound. So that's an SBA. And over here, the arms are flailing way out there. So that's an SBC. Now that's a serious barred spiral right there. Wow, that is one heck of a bar. Uh, now this, by the way, is in the NGC, the New General Catalog. This is a much larger list than the Messier list. So I guess maybe it's not as exclusive of a club as the Messier list. It has thousands of objects in the NGC. The next type, the next major type of galaxies are ellipticals. Now, Ellipticals don't have those pretty spiral arms, and to be honest, I don't think they're quite as photogenic. They're uh, sort of egg-shaped galaxies, and that's about it. Densest at the center, that's no surprise. That's what gravity does, just like our Earth is densest at the center, the sun's densest at the center, and uh, no surprise there. Now, about the only thing that I personally find interesting about elliptical galaxies is their size. See, all spiral galaxies are large. We've never found, you know, a dwarf spiral. All irregular galaxies are small. If they were any bigger, they would gravity would bring them together into a spiral or an ellipse. 
but ellipticals run the entire gamut, the whole range of sizes from the very smallest galaxies we know of, called dwarf ellipticals, up to the monsters, the very largest galaxies um, that are kind of like mega cities. These are like the Tokyos, the Sao Paulo's, the Shanghai's of, of the universe. And those giant galaxies can actually have trillions of stars. Now, our Milky Way is a big galaxy, and it has uh, maybe about 200 billion stars. Uh, but these are the true monsters of the universe. The one I'd want you to know by name is M87. Um, this one is in a galaxy cluster, not a star cluster, a galaxy cluster. See, elliptical galaxy, elliptical galaxy, elliptical, elliptical. But it is the dominant galaxy of that cluster, the largest one. And it's famous for this, a jet of material streaming out from the vicinity of its supermassive black hole just like the theory predicts should happen around supermassive black holes. So that's a really neat picture there uh, from M87. Now, I'm, I don't really like this, but they've taken ellipticals and classified them further from E0, which are basketball shapes, perfectly spherical, to E7. I don't know why it's necessary to have so many designations. That seems kind of silly to me, but that's how they do it, from E0 to E7, more stretched out galaxies they don't have much dust and gas of all the galaxy types they have the least amount of dust and gas which means they're not producing many new stars so that's kind of boring to me um, the stars by the way just like in a globular cluster uh, orbit like bees around the hive okay instead of a nice orderly carousel like in a spiral galaxy like ours where the the stars are going around kind of like they're riding on a cd around a disc uh, these are much less orderly, but they're still all orbiting the center. Now, that brings us to an interesting type of galaxy, what I might call a pancake galaxy. Not quite an elliptical, not quite a spiral. Uh, the old book I used to use called them SO galaxies, but I think the new term is lenticular. Sometimes these are considered to be entirely like a fourth major type of galaxy, which is fine. Um, but because they're not quite ellipticals, they're very, very squashed ellipticals, or you can think of them as kind of like spirals without the arms, kind of an in-between, like a pancake galaxy. Those are lenticulars. So if you in include lenticulars as a separate major category, that brings us to the fourth major category, irregular galaxies. No surprise, they're the most common type of galaxy. Why? Because they're small galaxies and nature just seems to prefer making, you know, small things. There are more small asteroids than big asteroids, more small stars than big stars, even more small animals than big animals um, for different reasons. But anyway, um, in this case, they are the most common type of galaxy. And even though they're not very, I guess, photogenic compared to the spirals, they do have a lot of dust and gas, which is cool because that means they have a lot of activity. They're making a lot of new stars. And if they're making a lot of new stars, it means they're going to have more supernovae and things like that, exploding stars. All right, the two that you should know for sure are the large and small Magellanic clouds. Um, and these can be seen with the naked eye. So Ferdinand Magellan, the first European, I guess, to sail far enough south to see these in the sky. I've seen them myself. Uh, we had an astronomy night in Peru one time and uh, we could see these with our own eyes, which is pretty neat, these little smudges. These are um, sort of like suburb galaxies of the Milky Way. They orbit the Milky Way, but they are considered to be separate galaxies and uh, they are irregular galaxies. Now here's a typical irregular, that, that kind of pinkish area there, that's some of the dust and gas that would be forming new stars in that one. Here's the small Magellanic cloud. And look at this. We've got a couple uh, globular clusters in the picture as well. Those, I assume, are probably more nearby than the small Magellanic cloud. And then there's the large Magellanic cloud. And let me just point out, that's where supernova 1987A occurred. The most important supernova of all time. The only one in modern times that was fairly close that we could really study up close. That was in our suburb galaxy, the Large Magellanic Cloud. So putting all this together, you get um, what's sometimes called Hubble's tuning fork. You have the ellipticals here from basketball-shaped to more stretched-out egg-shaped. 
Then you have the lenticulars, the kind of pancake galaxies. You have spirals and barred spirals. That's where the fork occurs. And you see they're further subdivided by how tightly wound the arms are. And finally, you have the irregular galaxies. Now, it was thought long ago that perhaps spirals grow up to be ellipticals or ellipticals eventually evolve into spirals. But we know now that is not the case. If it's born an elliptical, it stays an elliptical. If it's born a spiral, it stays a spiral. Except in one case, when galaxies collide, that is the only time they can really change their shape. So, for example, two spirals colliding can form a giant elliptical. Case in point, right now we know of two very giant spiral galaxies that are on a collision path. And yes, we're one of them. The Milky Way and our big sister galaxy Andromeda are heading towards each other. It is inevitable that they will merge. And so in the very distant future, billions of years from now, uh, they will probably form a giant elliptical galaxy. So that's how Mr. Hubble decided to divide up galaxies based on their shape into spirals, ellipticals, and irregulars. Thanks for listening.